Welcome everyone to where, when and how to collect firewood for domestic use in all states and territories of Australia. My name is Kaylee Mayo and I'm the creatrix and stewardess of Zap Studio. We can learn all kinds of useful skills, but particularly those that are being lost as our population ages and we become more urbanised and less inclined towards doing things for ourselves because we no longer have to as a matter of survival. I need to start with an apology uh, because the Zap in Zap Studio stands for Zombie Apocalypse Preparedness, which seemed like a really great joke in early 2018 when I started the business, but um, I didn't think that we would have so little time before we had to actually upskill um, for the plague arrival. So many apologies for that. I grew up in the country on a hobby farm where my mum was definitely the driving force for all of the daily tasks of farm living. She introduced me to permaculture from a very young age and I remember reading Bill Morrison's book Introduction to Permaculture when I was about eight years old and I've been thinking about system design pretty much ever since then. As many rural kids do, I moved to the city for university and lived and worked there for about 10 years before I was thoroughly sick of urban life. But in that time, I did meet and marry my husband. And when I suggested that we buy a farm and move to the country, he suggested buying an olive farm because his dad was an Italian migrant. And so we started from there. We moved uh, out here to central Victoria in about 2007. And I started sharing my stash of you for useful skills in various workshops in 2017 on an ad hoc kind of basis, and then started Zap Studio as a business in 2019. If you're interested in a comprehensive list of workshops and topics that I cover, you can download the You for Useful file from my website and I'll pop the link in the chat box at the end of this presentation. My aim with Zap Studio is to empower people with practical knowledge and skills while encouraging them to engage with learning in a safe and friendly environment. Many of my courses were initially aimed at women because there seems to be some sort of feeling that women can't or shouldn't do practical things. So many were actively discouraged from acquiring these skills in early life. But actually everyone is welcome to the workshops and the information because I think that they are really useful skills that more people should have. And I encourage everyone to keep learning all through their lives. But that's enough about me. Let's get started with the information you're here to learn. But I'd like to start this webinar by covering some information that applies to all states and territories with specific collection seasons. If the first date of collection period falls on a weekend, be prepared because you will go out to find the forest resounding with the incessant buzz of chainsaws when you get there. Serious collectors like to get out there very early in the season for the larger diameter logs. If the season opens during the week and you can take time off from your usual activities to go collecting, I do actually advise that it's worth to get some of the larger logs for overnight burning. Alternatively, some of the more remote collection areas may offer better sized logs further into the season, particularly if you are prepared to go a little bit off the beaten track and uh, further into the bush. Um, this advice applies, of course, to all states and territories where firewood collection is available, but especially Victoria and New South Wales, uh, due to the population density in these states. And also there could be a potential shortfall of firewood due to the Black Summer bushfires of 2019-20. The other point that applies in the collection areas is that whatever firewood you collect yourself will likely need to season for at least 12 months. So getting the smaller stove or kitchen wood, as I like to call it, is not necessarily a bad thing because it will dry much faster than the larger logs, particularly if you leave them before you split them. So today we're gonna to cover collection season dates for various states and territories, accredited training requirements where those apply, permit requirements and collection limits. Again, not all states and territories have them. Environmental care procedures, which are best practice across all states and territories. Occupational health and safety considerations, of course and local state and territory rules and regulations because they do vary quite considerably across Australia. Collecting firewood on public land in Victoria is actually subject to the most rules and regulations, but these are also implied in most other states and territories. So that it's well worth noting what we're gonna cover here. Um, Victoria does not require you to have a permit to actually collect um, firewood, but 
yeah, it's weird because they have the most rules and regs about what you can and can't do, but you don't actually need a permit to do it. The areas of state forest that are open each season do change though. So you'll always need to check online before you go collecting. And because of the slow growing nature of some forests, such as the river red gum bushes along the Murray, uh, some collection areas are only open to local residents of a particular shire or council area. This collection restriction has actually been extended in 2022 so that only residents of many of the central Victoria Shire and council areas can collect firewood from the state forest within those boundary areas. So for example we're in the Shire of Campaspe, we can collect along the Murray because the Campaspe Shire borders all the way up to the Murray. Uh, we can also collect in all of the state forests within the central Victorian restricted zone. But if you live, for example, in Gippsland, um, then you can neither collect along the Murray nor in the central Victorian collection areas, which is quite challenging for people down Gippsland way because, of course, um, that was some of the areas greatly affected by the Black Summer bushfires. Um, and also there's a fair few people out that way who do rely on wood for heating. So it can be a little bit challenging. Um, however, whether or not you're able to collect firewood from the roadside verge also varies between local council areas. So make sure that you check with your council before you head out. Um, in all council areas, whether you are allowed to collect on the verge or not, you're not permitted to collect along the side of any road that's managed by Vic Roads or Regional Roads Victoria, which are those designated by an A, B or C number, such as the A1, the B75, the C743 as examples. These roads are considered too busy and often have very narrow verges and are therefore unsafe to collect from because the people driving past tend to go 100 k's an hour or more and so not a lot of space to clear those. When you go to the forest fire management website as shown on the screen during the open wood collection period, so from the 1st of March through to the 30th of June, which is the autumn period coming up, or from the 1st of September to the 30th of November, the spring collection season, you can search an interactive map to find your local collection area. This link for the map is found in the section titled where you when you can collect firewood and it only appears during those collection periods. So once you've found your most convenient and permitted collection area on the map, clicking on the pin for that location will bring up a dialogue box that shows you information about where there are any whether there are any planned burns for that area if you'll need a four-wheel drive to access the collection area and also a link to download a pdf map of the area you intend to visit the additional information regarding four-wheel drive access and planned burns is also published on the map pdf file um, the document that you download is a two-page pdf the first covers the map and the planned burns information. The second page is a copy of the rules and regulations for domestic firewood collection, which are basically outlined on this slide. But it's a good idea to have a look at that second page because it's a smaller version of the signs that you'll see in the forest coops when you go to collect the firewood. So they post the same information on the edges of the collection areas so that you know this is when you have actually reached the collection area to go and find that wood. Now on the um, forest fire management website listed there you'll also find a link to the Avenza app and this app helps to actually pinpoint your location when you're out in the forest. If you have your GPS location on your phone switched on and you download the fire sorry the firewood collection area PDF to your phone you can open the PDF in that app and it will actually track as you approach the firewood collection area so that you know exactly when you have reached that um, collection space, even if you haven't seen the, the signs that are posted to say this is where you need to be collecting from. So it's a pretty handy app to have. It's pretty straightforward information really when you get down to it. Um, if you would like to provide some feedback, I would love to hear from you on that email address as provided there. And if you've enjoyed the presentation and you're interested in taking your learning firewood collection to the next level, I do have an online and in-person workshop on the safe use and maintenance of chainsaws for absolute beginners. It covers nine modules from personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, 
to how to mix and store fuel for two-stroke engines. We do also cover battery chainsaws um, and how to stand and move your body and techniques and that sort of thing for the safest way to cut fallen logs, which is what most people will be collecting in terms of firewood anyway. So you can purchase that through my website uh, as well. And that link for the website is www.zapstudio, Z-A-P studio dot online so www.zapstudio.online through the shop there uh, and i hope you have enjoyed this webinar thanks very much